Can you introduce yourself to our site that's very Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Vance Joy and I'm a singer-songwriter from Melbourne, Australia. Awesome. Well, we're backstage here at Firefly. Amazing set today. It was awesome. Like, how are you enjoying the festival? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, it's so fun. We, we had a, I think we had a really fun set and um, opening the stage and we on the same stage we went and saw Beck play last night. It was amazing, so we got a chance. We were kind of looking forward to seeing Beck and Outcast, so we got to see them both uh, last night. So, cool festival, you know, and Absolutely. yeah, it's fun. <laughs> so, what's your favorite part of playing a festival environment? Um, probably, it's a bit more throw and go, like you just kind of get on and, you know, it's not like you don't have that kind of same kind of perfection or uh, you don't have the, you can't be as fastidious as like what you would be if you're playing at a venue and you got like in ears and stuff, whatever. Our kind of um, setup is pretty basic for festivals at the moment, so it's just really kind of raw and fun and real, and I kind of like that. Uh, it's kind of exhilarating uh, before, especially playing to an audience that's never really heard you before. So, yeah, it's just that kind of excitement that you can get at a festival, um, especially when people's energy is really up, because uh, they're, like, getting loose and they've kind of been at it for three days already. So uh, it's cool playing in front of people who have been... I don't know, just in a, in a great uh, state of mind. So in what ways do you see the fan base kind of grow, especially after dates like this? I'm sure, you know, even social media will start blowing up and everything like that. Yeah, it's um, you notice little things, and I guess the main thing is when you come out to a place and you've never been before playing a festival with, like, a bunch of, you know, the, the acts at this festival are crazy big. Um, so to be playing alongside these acts and for people to recognise my songs and to be singing along to some of them is huge, so... I think, um, yeah, it's like you never know. You never know what to expect from a new audience, but you kind of see those little. You you can see the changes uh, when you, I guess, as you progress. Because America's a big place and there's a lot of people, so <laughs> it's like those things where you, there's a few more people this time or a few more people singing along. So it's cool. Absolutely. So what can you share with me about what you're currently working on now? Yeah, I'm uh, right now. I'm just finishing my album, and my album should be out in a couple of months. Okay. First album, which is which is exciting. That's and exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going back to New York tonight to finish a couple, finish off this song, uh, do some artwork stuff because that's all kind of coming to a head now. And um, other than that, I've got a song that I've kind of been brewing for a while. And uh, I don't know. There's always a song that you kind of want to finish finish off, or an idea that you want to. Like that one that eats at you. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's a few. There's a few annoying ones that'll <laughs> hang around, but they'll come around when they want. So, can you take me in the recording process so far for maybe one or two songs in particular, and tell me what the mindset's been like? Um, it's, it's always different. Like some songs you just love, you know, and like you, they come out of nowhere, and you're so grateful for them, like a miracle. So, a song I wrote called Georgia, uh, and it came to me on New Year's Day. Um, and it was an old riff, like you're saying, that was just hanging around for ages, never knew what to do with it. Then the chorus came along and they, they were just, they stuck. It's and chemistry. Uh, chemistry, <laughs> totally. It's, it is a chemical thing sometimes. And I guess, you know, it's like a, an equation or something where it fits and makes yeah. sense. And, um, yeah, that was cool. And I, I, we kind of had done all the tracking at that point. And so it was like, hey, I've got one more I want to chuck in, in the mix. Uh, and I feel like that's, that was a kind of, yeah, they're always like a little present, and so that, that one was really cool. And other ones I've been playing for ages, like songs like Wasted Time and Red Eye, which are songs that I've been playing in my set for almost a year. But because um, albums take takes a long time to come together, yeah. so we've had so much time hashing them out as a band that when we come in to record it, it's just like smooth as you know. That's good. Though. So it's cool. It's yeah. cool to have both things, like the one that you've really worn in and the one that's new, and you just let it fly and see what happens, what inspiration comes. So I'm always fascinated by a songwriter's ability to tell a whole story and invoke an emotion and a listener in like a three to four minute time frame of a song. Is there any challenges that go into that with you, for you as a songwriter? Um, definitely. I think um, I was, someone was telling me about the like the iceberg thing, like Hemingway, like in a few words he could express like a whole world of something. Uh, again, just because he's like erudite and he'll just be very economic with his language so yeah. I think it's like just choosing the right words and you know you, some, some things you might hear someone say might uh, like be that thing that you you might latch onto that sentence and use it in a song and for whatever reason it just strikes a chord with you and if it strikes a chord with you then it, it might have the same thing the same effect on someone else so it's I think it's difficult and there's no answer to how to do it but um, you just got to feel it out and um, trust your instinct and 
listen to good songs and read good books, that can help. Oh, absolutely. So for you personally, did you have that pivotal music moment that occurred that made you decide you wanted to pursue it for a career? I think a few different things, like watching uh, a friend of mine do really well and a few other people who were really doing, writing really good songs and just watching the way they approached it, like the way they perform and have everyone's attention and captivate everyone. And uh, I think you learn a lot from watching people you know do it and also I saw a few few really good shows um, I saw a guy called Johnny Flynn who's a really good folk singer from England and I watched him play at a really small gig in Northcote uh, in Australia a small club and uh, I feel like sometimes those intimate gigs can have the most effect on you because you just see some, I just very saw, saw him as a just a uh, performing his songs very straight back just him and his guitar and just a real dude and doing it really well and I got inspired by that. Um, there's not not a one pivotal thing, but there was a few different things that uh, probably combined to give you that, put that dream in your heart. Absolutely. On a personal level, I look at music as a universal language. We can all speak and understand, even if we take different messages or emotions away. What do you hope that your music will say to listeners or make them feel? Um, uh, I think different songs, you, you might want to communicate a different thing. Or, uh, obviously every song is slightly different but I think you just want to I just want to give my sing my song and, and, and like give it its best um, delivery you know like uh, every time I sing it I want to and, and I think that's usually if you've, if you've written a good song you can usually deliver on it you know and every time you sing it you can sing it with you you know with passion and I think it's just that just like I can front up and do that and then um, if I do that then hopefully someone's watching it and they might have a experience hopefully so. absolutely so we've seen a lot of changes in the music industry over the years with the biggest one being the uprise of social media how's that having an effect on you as an artist i get have to do my instagram posts pretty regularly my manager <laughs> tells me <laughs> yeah 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 my manager's like you gotta do this but she's she took a couple of good photos of the set so i've got a couple of things in my, in my pocket i'm more organized i have to stress about the next instagram post and yeah i think it's like it's kind of it's very weird. It's a weird little world. Like you just like the, all these numbers that kind of mean something. It's like oh, how many people? You, how many people following you? And you're like oh, how many people? How many people following That's this dude? I feel like it becomes a popularity contest. Yeah. And it's like, can I get more likes on the page? Like how do I do it? You know? Yeah. It's definitely it, it can likes is, it can be an ego inflating thing, but <laughs> I don't know. We're all I think we're all susceptible to it. Like everyone, even on your personal Facebook page. Yeah. Like I remember like just being like just updating statuses and seeing how many likes it would get, or just taking note. You know, everyone everyone notices. So. I don't even know. I think it's a, it's an interesting little world, and it seems to um, be a big part of promoting yourself. So you know, all artists we do it, and it's like a whole universe yeah. we create it in our pockets. I yeah, think it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it is. It's so yeah, it's it's bizarre, and um, I I love trolling through people's Instagrams. It's probably can be negative because you look at someone's Instagram and you're like, oh, they're doing so good, or they're living the coolest life. I want their life. So I don't know. That can be negative, but yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> So where can we find you next after Firefly? Um, where can you find me? I'm going to be going to Glastonbury next week, and then after that I'll be um, heading uh, back to Australia to do a bit of promo and stuff, uh, play a festival. But I'll be back uh, in America in August and um, okay. playing Wall of the Loser. And, uh, That's exciting. Yeah, yeah, I got some crazy, crazy yeah. stuff. Yeah, 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 crazy. <laughs> So yeah, I'm, I'm doing a headline thing. I'm going to release my album later this year, a couple of months' time, and then do some uh, some headline shows in America and Europe then. So. Absolutely. Well, we're so excited to see you at more festivals here in the States, and definitely can't wait to check the album out. Thank, Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.